everyone. Welcome to Our Kind of Homesteading. We're your hosts, Sherry. And Shauna. And today we are talking about gardening. That's right. Gardening. It's everyone's favorite homesteading pastime. <laughs> At least it's ours. I don't, I don't know if it's everyone's. I love but it. It should be, though. Actually, I've only loved it the last couple of years. I did not like it for the first however many years of our homesteading. Because of your small children? Because of my small children. That's right. <laughs> I still have a small child, five. I was going to say, you still have them, so. I just pawn them off and have siblings. That's true. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so gardening, I, I really enjoy gardening. I really like it. Yes, uh, ditto. I have gotten better, but, you know, gardening's one of those things. It's like you really have to learn just by getting in there and gardening <laughs> and learning hands-on. Definitely. Yeah. Trial and error, people. A lot of trial and error. Yes, a lot. And sometimes it's super, super defeating. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just go and cry in your garden instead of being super like, yay, I'm in my garden. You sit down in the middle of your garden bed and you cry because everything is dying. And you grab all your producing. dying plants and sob into them. Um, but yeah, so it, 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 it can be really defeating. Just this year, actually, I was like, I thought I was being like super like Johnny on the spot. I got all my freaking seeds started in January because I wanted, um, I was starting them. Um, I like to like stagger my seeds, so I start right. some early and then later. So I have anyway. Yes. Whatever. And um, <clears throat> so I was like, I'm gonna get this done early. I'm like amazing. And then I had them all in my greenhouse. They're all like warm and cozy. And I was like, Yay! I was all proud of myself. And you, you actually helped me. We did like yes. How many seeds? We did so many. Oh my gosh. We did so like many. literally over a hundred. There was think. well over a hundred because we were doing it for her, her house and my house. And so we were like, we're gonna. We are on top of it. We're going to do all of these seeds early, and these plants are going to be amazing by the time Mother's Day rolls around, because that's when we plant here in Northern California, Mother's Day. And, um, yeah, and then there's a storm, and my greenhouse just decided to come right out of the ground and flip over on <laughs> itself. And so... ah, poor Shauna. It, it was, like, the most depressing thing, like, to go... Like, we had, like, a huge tree fall over, and I was, like, pissed about that, because, like, I like my trees. But then the um, freaking greenhouse being, like, completely dumped over, like, all of my cups, all of the seeds, all of the dirt, all, like, mixed into one big happy pile of surprises. And, like, like what do you do? I redid everything, obviously, because I had to, but it was just so irritating. And, and now I have, like, things coming up where I'm like, wait, you're not a tomato. You're a bell pepper. <laughs> or... You're not a whatever, you know, I have like a bunch of chamomile like coming up and because I, I was also doing like my medicinal garden at that time and it, it, it was, it was depressing. Very, it was depressing, but I'm, I'm happy. But now she has lots of surprises. That's true. Surprise plants. Surprises you know? are fun. Yeah, that's super fun. Yeah. And, um, and now everything is, is fine. Yeah. I, and yeah. now you can, they're big enough to where I can be like, that is a tomato. All the dogs are in here wanting to lay down with us. I literally want to kill your small dog right now. That's no not, offense. That's not nice. No, it's not. I feel like killing her dog. So anyway, so when you... Stop throwing stuff at the I, dog. It was only a sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> she is like feverishly over there tearing your bean bag apart. Like, she what is, is happening? trying to get comfy, and Sherry. She has like mental damage. You have mental damage. Um... <laughs> Anyway, so when you go to, <laughs> Sherry's losing it over here, you should see her. She's trying to find anything, like, clothing that's around to throw at my small chihuahua that's just trying to get comfy on a bed. Um, How long does it take a chihuahua to get comfortable, people? Yeah, it's been, I don't know, 20 seconds? It's too long. Wow. It's too long. Wow. You're like, you have, <laughs> you have a second and a half. <laughs> Lay down now. <laughs> um... So before you garden, I think it's really important to know, like, obviously what you're planting. Sometimes you're going to have surprises, like I do. But, um, you know, think about how many people you're planting for and what your goals are. So, and that can be, like, I want to can, so I want to plant enough tomatoes to where I can can, um, you know, tomatoes or do salsa or what have you. Um, right. And and I think it's also important to... I. I feel like I went through a phase where I was saying, like, I'm just going to plant everything. And even if I knew we weren't going to eat said everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that, too. Yeah. And it's kind of, I don't know why. Looking back on it, I, and I remember. Because it's fun. 
I, I mean, it's not fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's fun to like see what will come up, and you're like, "Ooh, I'm never gonna eat that." But look how pretty it is. <laughs> but it's that so annoying when you're in your garden and it's well into the season, yeah. and you're just watering and watering, and you think you're just a slave to your garden, and you're like, "Why am I watering this stupid plant when no one is going to eat the vegetables from this?" There plant? has to be something on your farm that will eat it. I hell yeah, there is, Shauna. I just toss it to the pig. Have That's the chickens. What I'm saying. Like, like it's, I'm it's out there slaving away for your pig for my pig and my chickens. No, so. My point, people, just plant what you're going to eat. If you know, you like Shauna said, you know you're going to want tons of tomatoes for salsas and spaghetti sauce, whatever, Get just plant tons of tomatoes. You like cucumber, plant some cucumber. You like zucchini. I mean, who doesn't like zucchini? It goes well with everything. Plant it. But don't plant things. Like, mom bought snow peas. It's like the weirdest thing. You don't like snow peas? I don't not like them. Okay. But my kids aren't huge fans. And it's like... And plus, she only bought like one but, plant. Okay, What's okay, one plant gonna do? That's true. One plant is completely <laughs> useless. But here's the thing that I have found: like when you plant things that you're not really sure about, like if you can use them or eat them, like mm-hmm. you're not sure if you're gonna like them. But then you can find things like, wow, I really do like this. I feel like I'm being a parent right now. Like you should try it. <laughs> You should try it first before before you say that you don't like it. Shauna, I'm 40, and I know what I like. (laughs) I know what I don't like. I'm good. She knows she doesn't like dogs taking too long to lay down. That's what she knows. But the, um, yeah, because I have found, like, things that I wouldn't necessarily have been like, ooh, like, I'm going to, I want a bunch of this. And then I planted, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that was really good. I really like whatever. No, Even, I'm, like, I'm, certain no. varieties, like, where, like, um, the, the Armenian cucumber, super tasty. Okay, that was super tasty. See? But that's a cucumber. It's, it's a, it's a freaking no, cucumber. No, 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 not all cucumbers are treated equally because. <laughs> no, I, under, I, my point is, it's a freaking cucumber. I'm talking about, like, the weird, odd vegetables that you're like, oh, yeah, let's try that. Like, just, I. My point is, just save yourself the time and the money and the maintenance of your garden. Plant what you know you guys like. For the most that, part, you should. Yeah, but I think it. if you want to try out some stuff, you should, in your garden, have a little, you know, area where you're like, ooh, this might be good. <laughs> it might suck. It might it might be horrible. Or it might not even grow. Like, I feel like I can never grow a flipping watermelon. <laughs> they take a lot of water. Hence well, the not, name. Well, no, I know. But, like, last year I had, like, all these little... And previous years, I've had, like, they go, grow to a certain point, and I'm like, Like, yes. a, like a good softball size. Yeah. I, again, I'm like, I put my hands up yeah. like you Shana, guys can Shana's see them. putting her hands together, and I'm like, okay, I have to tell them all <laughs> what she's saying, trying to say with her, through her body language that no uh, one can see. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I get to a point, and I'm like, we're going to have a freaking watermelon this year. It's so exciting, because my kids love watermelon. Like, what well, kids don't? It? I don't like watermelon. Well, you're allergic, and so is my oldest, Yeah, obviously. water, I don't like it. It's it makes weird. my throat itchy. But <laughs> um, you have an allergy. <laughs> <laughs> but the, and then, like, it was actually doing well. I should actually try it again, but I didn't plant any watermelon this year. But then the gophers got to them. Damn gophers. See, we don't have gophers as a problem. I don't know. I think I have too many cats. And we have our raised beds. I don't know if that's both of those things probably, combined. Probably. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but we don't have gophers. Well, this year, because of the gophers, we... I don't mind, like, sharing with the gophers. I'm not, like, one to We be, know. Like, we know. I'm not one to be, like, I need to kill all gophers. Like, I'm not oh, that geez. person. Oh, jeez. I didn't even kill them. I just, you know, I don't know. What, a victim? Be like, yes. you can't live here anymore. Like, Get out. Put a rock in their holes. Be like, no. Oh. Go away. No, I don't mind sharing. Like, I... But, like, they want to, like, nibble off of every single one. Just, like, yeah, take little bites. They won't even take I'm like, eat the whole thing before you move on. Can you just eat the whole freaking tomato? Do you have to take they, little they, bites they out of everything in my garden? All the pumpkins, like, the squash, they, like, they go batty for that. Like, they were all about it. But I, yeah. um, so this year I'm, I'm experimenting. I'm scared. But, um. Oh, I'm, hay bales. I'm doing hay bales for, um. For some of the things, um, I heard like the tomatoes and your peppers do better in hay bales, so I'm trying that out. And then I'm also using a lot of the feed bags as um, for a lot of things. Yes, ditto. So I haven't figured out. If... And what we mean by feed bags is yeah. your feed, like, okay, goat chow, a pig chow, a chicken scratch, chicken laina. They all come in these bags, and they're kind of like feed bags, plasticky. Well, if they don't know, they don't know. They're kind of like plasticky. 
I don't really know how to describe. You still have to like put holes in the bottom. Yeah, obviously of them. drainage, but not they're just drain them. Yeah, and that's easy. You know, your gophers like, won't be able to get to those. Yeah, so I At heard it I works not. really, really well. So, anyways, I'll let you guys know how it turns out. I'm really hoping that it, I my garden was pretty good last year. Um, they didn't. I have. I always plan to lose some plants to like gophers and stuff. I think that's a good idea for everybody. Yeah, or so plan, to plant more than what you think you'll need, just in case you do have a gopher problem. Or even or just pests, like, just, right? Or, yeah, pest. Oh my gosh, last year, pest and my tomatoes. Like, oh, all, really? They devastated all my tomatoes. I don't remember that. You, oh yeah, it was super annoying. Um, I would look. I would pluck those little effers off my plants and just be like, "Here, chickens." Oh, that's not nice. But you can't. You cannot see them. You cannot see them. It is weird, actually. Oh, the big tomato worms. Yeah, it, it, they blend right in. It's bizarre. And you're looking, like, straight at them and you don't see them. Oh, I do remember that now. Um, so, yeah. So, they're, think about what you're planning, getting back to that, what your goals are, and obviously your space. Like, if you only have so much space, you only have so much space. If you have a lot of space, congratulations, you can do a huge ass garden. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, yeah, so, and then starters versus seeds. Uh, yeah, so... You know, seeds are, obviously, they take more work. Um, you got to plant them pretty early. I think we started, when did we say we started last year? We started, I started in January this year. I splashed our... Our seeds? The seeds, yeah. Did we? Was it January? That's weird. It seems like longer. Anyways, we started in January, and most of them are doing really well now. My greenhouse is really, really... But see, what we do, and that's probably, obviously, you have to think about that. You need to have a space for them. You can't just plant seeds in whatever, and then stick them, you know, keep them outside, they would need to be in a greenhouse covering to ensure that they stay warm because obviously January, February, March, even into April, it's too cold. And, um, you know, versus the getting just the starters, obviously that's more expensive. It's a lot less time. And usually when you buy starters, they're just really good, healthy, already very well started. Established. Yes. Plants. And well, it's good. Well, which... Reminds me, so a lot of people use for their seeds, there's these, like, starter kits that come with, like, these little itty-bitty, like, they're so small. Again, oh, I'm the holding tiny my holes hand you... up. Yeah, literally, like, they're a little bit bigger than, they're probably like as big as, a like, a dollar, like a dollar-sized coin. Oh, yeah. Okay. A silver dollar. That they're, is like, legit so how tiny, and they're, like, are. plant your seeds in here, and it comes with, like, a plastic covering, so it's supposed to be, like, a greenhouse effect, and you put it it's in crap, your house. people. Don't buy those. It's crap. Don't buy them. Your seeds aren't going, there's only so much nutrients in that for them to get so big. So they're not going to get as big as quickly as you would like. And then even if they do, they usually turn out to be really leggy because they're reaching for light because most people either won't put lights on their indoor plants or they won't put them low enough. Um, And so they reach for those lights and they get super leggy. It just, I would recommend, (laughs) we um, use red Solo cups. (laughs) Or super fancy like that. But you know what? You can get like a huge thing at Costco or really wherever. And you can reuse them. And you can reuse them. They work so well. And you don't have to like toss them out. I'm not like super wasteful. I'm not like, well, that solo cup is dead to me. Like (laughs) going into the landfill. We we reuse them every year as for as long as possible. And if you're you know, if you're good to your solo cup, it can last quite a few years. (laughs) Be good to your solo cups. Yeah, and you know they work really well because this huge, this big solo cup it has basically enough area to for your plants to have as min, as much nutrients as they need in that growing phase from seed to starter, and then once you plant them, it's been like however many months, right? Four months, whatever, and they're doing really well. Like all of ours are doing pretty well. I mean, be, I mean, obviously besides Shauna's catastrophe of her tipped over greenhouse and going everywhere. So as long as your cups don't tip over, so what we use to prevent our cups from tipping over, besides your greenhouse blowing over though, okay, is um, just like uh, cardboard boxes, like a very, like a lower cardboard box, and you can even like cut them in half or whatever, and you put it, put as many as you can fit, and then just keep doing that, and then that's how I stack them all in my greenhouse, it's just not on top of each other, but on shelves, but inside cardboard boxes, so that way they're not falling and getting everywhere, because obviously you can't have that. Can't have that. Can't have it. So, yeah, um, I think, and you can also um, save your seeds 
then that's what we do like every year so you don't have to go out and buy like a bunch of seeds I, it's always fun to buy like new seeds I like to experiment <laughs> it's but so um fun. so fun <laughs> but you can like save your seeds um it's pretty simple process it doesn't take a lot of effort it's just it's just a matter of like a lot of forethought obviously you know pulling your seeds out of yeah like your zucchini though like you mo- you take the seeds out anyways like when you're cut it or are cooking it right you take all the seeds out of the middle or whatever I don't know I do but um (laughs) and then all you have to do is put them in a cup of water and you wait I think it's two days three days and then um they'll get like uh, I don't want to say fermented is that the right germinating no they just like ferment I think I think that's the right word I don't know I don't know anyways and then you wait a couple days, and then you just dump them out. And all the ones that kind of, like, float to the top are, aren't are great. They're bad. And then the, all the ones that are kind of, like, at the bottom, those are the ones that you want. So you dump them out, and you clean them. You, put, you let them dry, like, on a um, – I let them dry on, like, a screen. So, so you just like keep stick. the ones that are at the bottom of the cup. That's yeah. what you mean. And any ones that float, you toss those away. Yeah. Okay, and then you dump them out onto, like, a paper towel. I not, A towel's just... not good because they stick to it when they're drying. Oh, right. So okay. I dump them onto, like, a screen – and then oh, I put smart. them in, like, a plastic baggie, and then I label the bag, like, whatever seed it is. Once they've dried completely. Once they've dried. Right, okay. And there's different ways to save seeds, depending on what vegetable it is. But, like, all your squash and zucchini, that's how you would do it. And then you just put it in, like, a like a cabinet, like a darker place. You don't want it out in, like, the sun. Anyways, it's pretty simple to that's save seeds. That's good tips. I like it. Yeah. Anyways, getting moving right along here. Um... Yeah, so one thing I have learned over many, many years of having children for the past 18 plus years um, is nope. you should, <laughs> if you have children, plan on a part of your garden for your kids. That's a great tip. It's a great tip, people. I'm going to tell you a little story about my, well, she's 10 now, and she's always been kind of a little firecracker. And (laughs) I would take her into the garden. Um, I have a, a, you know, really, really good sized garden, raised beds, all that stuff. I would take her in the garden and I would go water and stuff. And she, you know, she's like a year, year and a half, maybe even two. And she would just go over and just like pull the plants, just grab them with a little chubby baby hand. And then just like rip them out of the ground. I, and it's so lightning quick. <laughs> and then she's like decimated five plants before I can get over to her. I and I'm like, oh helping, my God. She, she was helping a weedy. <laughs> she, I'm sure she did. She's, I was, I'm always pulling weeds in the garden. So I'm sure she's like, she's well, like, this obviously is coming out. Mom, this helpful. has big red things growing on it. We don't need it, right? <laughs> I'm being helpful. Oh my gosh. And I'd be like, Corelli, no. And oh my gosh. And then she would get all sad and start to cry. Yeah, but, she's and then, helping. But then I'm sad because I'm like looking at my dead tomatoes like, okay, sweet. That's awesome. I worked so hard for those plants. This is swell. So tip to the wise people. You got to have an area where your kids can play. Even if it's you know, a smaller raised bed maybe and you just have some dirt in there, they can pull those weeds out and you can even label it. Tell them this is their area specifically for them. Um, we put a fairy garden in our garden area for my girls. And then my five-year-old has a dragon garden. Dragon den. Dragon den. Sorry. Yeah. So they, and they love those things. And my five-year-old, it's really weird. He's actually really good in the garden. He's like a freaking crazy kid, but he is totally so awesome in the garden. He waters and he helps and he's so sweet. Nothing like Crelly. It's weird. That is weird. Yeah. Because Legend is by far the most... um, The most crazy. Crazy out of all of them. Her kids, like, progressively got crazier (laughs) as she had them. We told her... I really blame all my other children, though, for making them all crazy. You know what I mean? We told her if she had any more, it definitely would be the Antichrist, so... (laughs) Wow. (laughs) (laughs) I, I blame all my older kids. You know, they're way too rough. My older boys, they're 18 and... Almost seventeen, and since since Legend, my youngest, has been born, they've all they they toss him around, and treat him like he's like what like like mom would say like a bowl of cherries. <laughs> <laughs> they're just they're crazy. So, anyways, have a, spe- a special place in your it garden for your a, kids. It's a good idea, yeah. and they actually, um, as they get older and they no longer want to just you know destroy kill, things, kill things. <laughs> they do like taking care of things. I have found oh at yeah, least, like my kids now, their area is they grow all the lettuce. 
for our garden. Nice. And because lettuce is really easy to grow, oh, especially super from easy. Seed. spinach too. Yeah, spinach, any yeah. kind of anything like that. And so they, you know, have it. I have like the, I do the lettuce in in uh, pallets. Oh, okay, very cool. Yeah, and so it's in the pallets, and they can go over there. They know they need to water it. Um, every day and I don't have like the automatic waters attached to it. I so know that, we don't either. I feel like I'm living I, for like the whole garden I do but in like not a cave for, still with for my the, garden. I feel <laughs> yeah. like I'm like why don't I just put in automatic waters? Why? It's like probably why? the easiest thing to. So easy and I just have no reason. We even have the automatic waters. I have the whole setup just sitting there. It's like, at me it's like every the time simplest I water. process. So I, I do not like there's no way I could water my whole garden. Like there's no way. Like, I mean, oh, with automatic waters? No, with, I have to do automatic waters. Like it's oh, I, you have to. I okay. have to. I yes. have to. Like there's, I would be out there for a millennia, just watering every, especially in the summer. I am out there for hot. so long. Like no, I refuse. I jump in my pool, and then I run up and water the garden. And halfway I don't through, have a pool. I jump in back in the pool and I run back to water. It, that's it's freaking like, hot. People... And it takes me forever. <laughs> I need to have Aiden put in the automatic. Aiden, are you listening? Put in the automatic waters. Right? You know, you have to do it. It's, like, so much easier than not having them because, yeah, it sucks. But um, <laughs> I, I the, really do the, like the, to water by hand, though. I really do appreciate being I in my Well, garden. I feel like there's always something you have to water by hand, regardless if you put in automatic waters or not. So, um, yeah, I I have. But for the for their garden, they like to water it by hand. It was my point of all that. Yes. yes so I do. leave the the pallets alone for them to where they can water it um every day and then they they really enjoy like watching the lettuce come up and then they oh, can yeah. well it's super and rewarding the, you know it is rewarding yeah. and then it's cool with the lettuce at least is because they can just replant a seed in that place and then more lettuce will grow oh yeah you know it's like so quick so anyways tips and tricks for you guys that's right um the my kids love being out in the garden with me we also have fairy gardens and dragon dens out there and they like to be out there for for all times of the season. But, you know, we it's not like our garden is, like, a mile away from our house or anything. But it's a good distance, you know, whatever. And it's probably a couple house lengths away, I guess, from our actual house. But, so, my, you know, river, my daughter will be like, I have to pee. And she'll just, you know, like, run out of the garden and... She'll pee somewhere because we live on land. <laughs> because they're farm kids. Yeah. That's what so this one time she like she's like I have to pee and she like runs out and she comes back and it was it was actually pretty quick because it, it was literally impressive. Like I was like, oh wow, you're really skilled at <laughs> that now. Like I like I'm like I have to run to the house. Like I'll be right back. Like, running for my life, you know. I've already had kids. Can't hold my bladder anymore. I'm like oh my god. Like oh, um. God. Anyways, and so she came back in and. Uh, my son was in there, and he was like, "Wow!" Like, he was like, "That was really quick, River. Are you learning the ways to be a man?" And she got so offended, and she's like, "No, I'm learning the ways to be a strong, independent woman." <laughs> and and like of how like she said it, and then Ronan's response instead of be- him being offended, he was like, "Yes, Queen." Like <laughs> he's like, "I will support you." <laughs> it was this is what I do. Adorable. Aww. So yeah. Anyways. Um, who would have thought that a story about peeing outside would be adorable? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. I'm not good at peeing outside. I don't do it. I'm not bad at it. It just, I just know. And, and you know, it's so funny. Whenever I'm like, oh, I have to pee. I have to go home. And obviously our, our house, I mean, not obviously to you guys, obviously to Shauna, our house is quite far from, from my garden. And so I'm like, I gotta go. I'll just run into my mom's house and dad's house to go pee and stuff. But legend, my five-year-old would be like, Mom, just go, just go pee right here, Mom. Just pee outside. And I'm like, no, no, I don't like to pee outside. He's like, why? It's so easy. And I'm like, it's easy for you because you're a boy. <laughs> right? And he's like, this is really, really I easy. I can do it right now while I'm talking to you. Have a conversation. Right? No problem. <laughs> and on top of that, my older boys don't want to walk out of their house and be like, Mom, what the hell are you doing? Be like, <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my god, your older boys would die. They'd be like, they would die. oh my Lorenzo god. Lorenzo would just like, around and walk away. Yeah. Aiden would be like, Mom. Yeah. They'd be like, all right, somebody commit, Mom. Um, okay, so we talked about planning out your garden ahead of time and then obviously keeping in mind how much space you have. So, like, if you're going to do rows, you're going to do containers. If you have, like, a smaller space. I think there's a lot you can do in containers, and people don't realize it. A lot. And actually, you know, you can even, and hanging stuff, you can hang tomatoes. Yeah, which is weird. It, it's super weird, but it works really, really like, well. really? Does I just, it work well? It does work. Uh-huh. I've and never actually, have, I've never tried it. 
we tried it one year in our garden, and I just tried it with one, and it seemed to work perfectly fine. But, like, how, I, yeah, it just, it feels like it would get top-heavy at some point. It just grows down. Oh, that, was, that, that seems really obvious now that you said that out loud. <laughs> she just said, you make it top-heavy. I'm like, no, because it, it goes down. Gravity is at work. <laughs> Well, like, like, just the I, like my, my mind is blown right now, and that was, like, so obvious. All of you guys listening are like, well, she's the dumb one. <laughs> Shauna's little, little look, little eyes, like, oh, bing. Like, light bulb goes on. Uh, uh, the other good thing very, to, very, very funny. Um, container-wise are strawberries. Really yeah, strawberries grow containers. really well in containers. Potatoes, when a, in a deeper container, potatoes, potatoes will grow very, very well. Oh, which leads us to... When you're planting in your garden, you do have to have some, um, you know, forethought before you plant because there are some things that you shouldn't plant in the ground that will kind of take over and will be the bane of your existence. (laughs) So a lot of your medicinal plants, um, even like your mints and stuff like that. Oh my gosh. Mint is, it will go crazy. It will go crazy if it's not in a container. So I think you should container your mint if it is in your vegetable garden or if you have the space, do a separate medicinal garden, I think would be ideal yes. um, from my standpoint. Because a lot of those herbs that are medicinal or they say that like the mint is supposed to keep pests away, it it will take over and you'll just be always trying to cut it back. So if you want to have the mint in your garden to keep pests away, I would put it in a container. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mint can get huge. We had a huge plant that finally the alpacas actually just like ate it down to nothing oh, really? and they killed it. Yeah, Not which I was alpacas. kind of... Actually, no, I was kind of, for once, I was actually very thankful for them eating a plant oh, weird. that I kind of liked because it was just, yeah, it was taking over. It was just too much. Yeah. The um, the other thing, though, Sherry just mentioned the potatoes. I would not grow those in your garden unless they're in some kind of container or, like, I grow my potatoes um, out back. Like, I have this retaining wall and we just grow our potatoes up there and it works really well. And we use... Um, large like a horse trough like a water horse mm-hmm, trough mm-hmm. um that works really well obviously you've got to put some drainage holes in the bottom don't not do that and but they grow really well in a trough because it's deep enough and there's it's enough, they it's can, just enough space. i mean they can take over they can grow as much as they want yes but um the there are a lot of cool like um potato growing layouts plans why why can't i say things today <laughs> I feel like it's every time I podcast. I'm like, what are what are words? How do I speak? Somebody help me. Um, but there yeah, like a layout, just a just a layout of a garden. A potato a bin. God, a bin. I couldn't think of the word bin. What is wrong with me? Okay, just three little layers. <laughs> a potato bin where it basically it goes up instead of like out. So you, um, it's like a a long like cylinder. Think of like oh, stacking. Okay. Like you, yeah, and you can make it square around it. The potatoes don't care. But um, you put the watering, like a hose, like you get a hose and you put it down the center and you pop holes in the hose like all around. And so it waters it all evenly. Nice. Yeah. And then you put a door in at the bottom so you can harvest your potatoes. So I've heard different things. I've heard some people say that this works really well. And then I've heard a lot of people say that it's just better to plant your potatoes in like a longer container because being stacked on top of each other can yeah because I would think you would problems. need more than one door to access all the potatoes. I mean, how are you gonna reach through like a huge portion of dirt? I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't so, really sound. But I, I mean, mean, I guess you just have four doors. Pretty cool. And if you're trying to save space, I think it's yes, a good yes. space saver. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm sorry. I don't really think ever about space saving. We have so much space. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like, they, I, so for I a lot to, of people yeah. that like, yeah, I want to sure. I want to plant potatoes, but I don't have the room. I mean, right, you could that would be a good option. Do that, yeah, a really good option. And you so. could so you could even use like build essentially like boxes, like like what you mm-hmm. would use for a garden bed, mm-hmm. and then just build them all the same size, and then just stack those on top of each other. Yeah, and they mm-hmm. and make a door at the bottom, make a door or a couple bottom. doors. I would do, I would do a couple doors, one on each end. Yeah, so there's some cool plans on like Pinterest and stuff. Want to check it out? But, um, so the, oh, there, there's a lot you can plant in containers. Like we said, there's some things that you shouldn't plant in your garden that has a tendency to take over. Um, if, if you guys know of anything, like, let us know, like, 
what you've planted in your garden that you like hate now. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's always like good information to have, and there's a lot. Well, of it's things good that... information to share. Maybe some people haven't ever planted that, and they're like, and then they get it, they're like, what the heck? Why so if you I planted something and it took over your garden or took over a space you did mm-hmm. not want it in, put it in the comments because everyone would love to know. Yeah, um, I I've heard that um, even like basil and stuff. If you're really good about like taking care of your taking care of your basil like it can get pretty crazy like I said a lot of like the medicinal herbs that's or, weird I, I could not see that with the basil. chamomile Maybe it's, oh chamomile will go crazy fever few yeah um a lot of the the Thai basil I've heard is annoying see I've just planted like your normal basil regular basil and then like your holy basil and see both will tend to die off in the colder months yeah my holy basil is coming back it's in and they're both they're in containers Okay. Yeah. So, let, I guess the holy basil did get pretty freaking big, though. The holy basil? Like, it's huge. Is, it's, like, taking over the pot. It's it's basically, I have to repot it into something else. I told, everybody should have a holy basil plant. It does get really big. I wouldn't suggest it for your garden. Um, I know that. In a in, container in your garden is In fine. a container, yeah. yeah. That's but what I maybe put it in a larger container. Because yes. you do want it to get really big. It's really, has a lot of health benefits. It's an adaptogen. Um, it, Which means... Oh, so it it has adaptogenic properties. So it it basically it, it helps your body adapt to everyday stresses, stressors. So, like if you take it every day, it it helps you, you just like deal with things. So it helps with anxiety. It helps with um, depression. It helps with all kinds of things. And just like it t- takes the edge off more or less. Right. Right. So um, the adaptogens are are really good for you. I take ashwagandha, which is um, like a ginseng. Every Ditto. day, so mm-hmm. does Sherry, and so it's but the stuff. holy basil is a, is an adaptogen, and you can grow it in your garden, and it's really easy to grow, and it's great for you. They actually say like you know, it's not a home unless you have a holy basil plant. I I've never heard that. That's funny. You said that a couple weeks ago too, and I was like, what? Yeah, I've never heard that saying. I've heard it it's, a couple times. And you know, the the holy basil, um, it's not that it tastes as far as taste wise, it's not like your normal basil. It still tastes good. I like it. Um, I always am eating it, though, whenever I go into my garden. It's a bit spicier. Yes, it's, it's also called hot basil. Yeah, it's a bit spicier, so like, it's, my kids do not like it. Yeah, it's not um, It's not like the sweet basil. Yeah, not at all. Like the basil you would put like on a pizza. It's not, I mean, I guess it would actually, for me, it would be good, really good on pizza, but my kids would not appreciate it. So yeah. it definitely has a, has a kick to it, mm-hmm. but like Shauna said, it has tons of health benefits. So if you don't have one, you should get one. You should get one. Um, yeah, and so... The gar- for me, my garden, I want to be like, it's kind of like my happy space. And so for me, aesthetics are really important. I'm not, I have like a huge, like outside of my vegetable garden, I have like a really nice garden garden where I have like lavender beds and, you know, honeysuckle covered like arbors and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So I have it, but I want it more in my like vegetable garden. Sherry has like a beautiful vegetable garden where you go in and it feels like almost like a little secret garden space it's just and that's what I want I want Sherry's garden <laughs> well it's you know I I a lot of it I attribute to the um honeysuckle blanked. yeah the honeysuckle growing up like all on top of all over the fence we have a six foot like basically it's a six foot chain link fence around the whole garden I know it sounds hideous and ugly but the honeysuckle has been there for over 20 years and it's just, it's, you cannot imagine it just taking over. And it's, it's beautiful. And it makes it very cozy. It does. And, um, and like, you think, like, her vegetables would get too much shade, but they, they because love of where it. it. Yeah, because of where it's situated, it, they don't. And it, my garden usually does really, but the, really well. But it gets enough. Like, I feel like my tomatoes almost get too much sun. I know tomatoes are supposed to be, like, I love the sun. But I feel like. No, they do need a bit of shade. That's they, my, at least that's my personal experience. I, I absolutely agree with you. So I always plant mine in the bed closest to the honeysuckle because at, Basically, at about four o'clock every day, it's shaded from then on, and my and the tomatoes love it. Yeah. But from but but before four, when the sun rises, all the way to four p.m., it's all sunny. But then they get shade. Sherry has the best tomatoes every year. Her tomatoes go grow better than mine every year, you know. And I I really, you know, think it is because they get that shade time. Yeah, and you know it's funny because they tell you full sun, and I've just I've not found that. When I put them in the other bed that gets more sun, they do worse, and you know, they say full sun, like right on the packaging. Like, why are they lying to you? <laughs> it's weird. And maybe, um, I think I've, we've had this, 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 you know, conversation before, is maybe it's because, obviously, where you live, the climate, 
everything is, oh, is yeah. you know, a huge factor in all of this. And we live, like, I, I think you've heard already, Northern California up in the foothills. So that might have to do something with it. But anyways, our tomatoes like half shade, half sun. Um, yeah, so I think aesthetics are important to me. They're not important to everyone. I'm but not... if you do want aesthetics, you should plan it out, you know? And there's uh, there's things you can do. You know, the, the honeysuckles are very pretty. Grapes are very pretty. Yeah, there's a lot of things if you need to stay edible because, like... Oh, your cherries. space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you want to grow vines. Like, the grapes aren't going to be pretty year-round, obviously. They, yeah, they die. They will go dormant. Yeah. They... Not die, sorry. They go dormant. My mom. Yeah. I get that from my mom. She's always like, your grapes are dead. I'm like, mom, they're dormant. <laughs> Um, the thing I want to try out, I wanted to do it this year and I didn't get around to it. I want to make a kiwi tunnel. Oh, you said that. It'd be oh, so it'd be cute. so cute. I, I've been wanting to do it. So I'm going to, once I do it, I'll take pictures, you guys. And I'll show you. Not obviously on our podcast because that's weird, but <laughs> it's going to be amazing. On so our website. I want to do, yeah, on our website. I want to do. Under construction. <laughs> I want to do a kiwi tunnel. They're just really pretty and like super aesthetic. I don't know if I'd do it in my vegetable garden. It's just hard because deer still get into my. Yeah. Okay. Vegetable. And see, and that's the other thing we should talk about. You know, when, um, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're fine. So when they say, when you're like going, if you, if you go, if you decide you're going to get starters instead of seeds or even with seeds, whatever, pay attention. If your garden is going to be accessible to deer and deer can jump very, very, very high. They can't jump a six foot fence. And that's why we did our six feet because when we first put our garden in, we did have deer on the property, but since getting our livestock guardian dogs, we don't ever see anything. So I can actually now do a garden outside of the chain link fence, which is amazing. But you got to think about the deer. If it says deer resistant, it it's not. Uh, in the dead of summer, the deer are going to come in and eat it. I mean, if, if it's the dead of summer and everything is brown on the ground, all the weeds, they are going to eat your deer-resistant plants, I promise. Yeah, and they're Unless all... they're freaking poisonous. But see, if they're poisonous to deer, they're also poisonous to your small children and, and any animals, other animals you yeah. have on your property. It's so just... think about that. Either make huge high fences, like I said, six foot, they can't jump that. Or if you have dogs running around, they're not going to come on your property with dogs. So Shauna's dogs are in her house often like outside inside with her all day kind of thing and so that's why she has the deer on her property yeah so and they tried to deer. do the fencing around but we, I don't, I don't okay think. we'd like to uh, <laughs> so she's like i don't even want to talk about I it don't, it pisses I me really off don't. so our garden <laughs> is our vegetable garden is completely secure we have i think it's eight foot fencing all around our okay. garden so we have like a cute little like garden fence and then we put like the wire above it all the way around um that goes super high so we don't have deer in our vegetable garden anymore because when they came in the first year, I think we were here, and like they decimated our garden like almost immediately. I remember that. And you're, you were so upset. It well, was... like what were we thinking? And it's like I grew up, like okay, whatever. <laughs> Sean was like, I'm willing I, them away. I, they yeah, don't it was come just in. like wishful thinking. I'm not really <laughs> sure what was happening, but um, live and learn. It's fine. You know? I guess. Yeah. Anyway, so. We try to put up, like, it's so stupid. So we have, like, a fence around our property of just, like, the short, like, what is it, four-foot fence? Right. Five feet, four feet? I don't know. It's fist five. Okay. Yeah. So we have that, and then we wanted to plant, like, a bunch of fruit trees and stuff, as you do. And Right. <laughs> and so we didn't have a lot of money, so we're like, we're going to use this really crappy bird netting, and this is going to go great. And we're going to put this up. <laughs> And it's going to look like shit. <laughs> and looking back on it, I don't know, like, I, what the heck? I don't know. And I remember looking at it being like, well, that looks like crap. <laughs> like, it, how is it not going to say well, that to you? you know, if, if you guys know me, it still looks like crap. <laughs> I don't know. Not as much because there's, there's so many, so much stuff growing. Oh like, God! What do you have it's on the just back awful. Of the so fence over there? It's so like we, I've huge. given up on like the property. Property. Our deer come in and eat our fruit trees, but our fruit trees have grown pretty well now to where they're kind of like above the deer. Yeah, they're mature. Yeah, so um, yeah. yeah, so the deer will still come in a lot. My one bigger dog, he scares the deer away quite often, but they'll come in at night. And we have this one deer that likes to chase my chihuahua like every year. <laughs> It's, like, crazy. So, like, anyways. She's I, like, I know who's boss in this situation. It ain't you. Yeah. She, yeah, she does not care. Like, she doesn't care. She even chases Jelly, poor like, the little, big dog. Poor little She was, like, in. crazy. But, anyways, the definitely think about what you have around you. Deer can be really 
annoying. Yeah, very annoying. And and I'm I'm obviously I'm not like condoning like shooting them or anything. That's freaking awful. But, but there is a lot of things you can do. Like yeah, I a lot. Know yes, of places that have the um the motion activated uh, sprinklers. Yes, and that would terrify a deer. Like it, it will run. So yeah, so um the the motion activated sprinklers. Having the LGDs like Sherry does, obviously deer aren't going to come on your property because they would get eaten. <laughs> um, so there are different things you can do. Just think about your situation. Obviously don't use bird netting. Don't do what I did. <laughs> Learn from our mistakes. It looks awful and it doesn't work. Isn't that weird? So both <laughs> things. So you have a crappy fence and it won't do anything. Hooray. Uh, um, anyways, I, we're going to do more on gardening. We have a lot more to say, but we're kind of running out of time now. Yeah. So we'll break this down into multiple podcast episodes. And if you guys have any questions or comments, you know, leave it below and check us out on our website, our kind of homesteading.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and happy homesteading. Happy homesteading.